Well, hey guys, welcome back. Today you're going to see something you rarely see from me, and that is truly almost microscopic pickiness on models, because today we are taking a look at the Intermountain Tier 4 Givo versus the Scale Trains Tier 4 Givo. So in this corner you've got Intermountain, and in this corner you've got Scale Trains. Now the last time we did a head-to-head -head comparison was with the SD70 ACE from a couple different companies. Today we're doing stuff a little different. We're going to actually break the locomotives down into section on detail and see which companies have an edge in each section of the locomotive. We'll then look at pulling power, smooth drive, weight, factors like that to see if there's any edges there and we'll come to a conclusion. Now I will tell you that I feel that both of these companies have the best interest of the modeler at heart. I think there's great people from both companies and I'm going to tell you now, neither model is perfect because you have flesh and blood human beings which are imperfect behind the scenes of both companies and at the factories. So if you guys are looking for me to just toss a model or you know call one completely garbage and the other one's great, that's not going to happen, but I will give you the absolute facts as I see them and pick sides throughout the review on strengths and weaknesses. So with that said, not really a review, but a head-to-head -head comparison. Let's go ahead and get started on that. Intermountain versus Scale Trains, Tier 4 Givo right now. first thing we're going to do is look at boxing. I'm not going to unbox them and waste time, but the scale trains or the Intermountain Tier 4 Givo comes in a box with a slide out clamshell. You have to unscrew the fuel tank and you have to put on the cab window sunshades. Scale trains version comes in a regular box as you see with a lot of manufacturers with foam inside, plastic. You just slide it out. The sunshades are already installed. There's no unscrewing of the fuel tank. I will have to give the advantage to scale trains there on just the boxing features, unboxing features, um, because it's easier to get them in and out of the box. Don't CSX fans don't think we're going to look at these. We're going to compare two UPs. So we're going to roll straight into that. I will be talking a little faster than normal, but please feel free to recheck out parts of this review as we take a closer look next. Okay, for reference purposes, Intermountains to the right, Scale Trains to the left on these locomotives, and we're going to start right off on the front, but we're going to start on something very obvious, and that is paint color. Now, for UP, I don't know about the other schemes. I didn't do as much research as I did for UP. I feel that Intermountain nailed the colors better than Scale Trains on the yellows. Now, I looked at prototype photos. I'm not going to put a lot up here. I might put one because I don't have rights to them. I went and walked around a tier 4 Givo unit and I believe Intermountain get the, got the gray and the yellow better. That is my opinion. The actual yellow is very hard to nail down. Model railroad manufacturers have struggled with it for a very long time because you have all sorts of different factors, lighting situations, situations on whether it's fresh out of the factory or if it's been on the road for a little bit. I can completely understand how scale trains could have just a slight variation from the actual yellow on the Intermountain version. So that one, in my opinion, the nod goes to Intermountain, but we'll move along and there's other factors. I think the front detail in terms of durability, I believe Intermountain slightly more durable, but it's also slightly thicker. Usually when you have a slightly thicker locomotive, that tends, uh, handrails and things, that tends to start to err on the side of maybe slightly th thicker than the actual prototype. I think the windshield wipers are a match. Uh, I think they're both the same there. Uh, the scale trains version has a cab detailed uh, inside, so does Intermountain, but they have a cab video recorder. I don't see one on Intermountain. PTC and antenna arrays, I believe, are tied. I believe they look good on both. Um, I do like how scale trains maybe got a little bit of an edge there because they do have the anti-skid on the roof. I'll try to show that in detail, uh, just it's painted on. 
and uh, not exactly otherwise visible. There is a very big deviation in the actual color of the roof of the cab here. So I'm not sure which one's right. I couldn't get the angles there. Uh, both have separately applied grab irons. Both have LED lights. Uh, scale trains, ditch light housings look thicker where Intermountains look smaller. Looking at some prototype photos, I did see where scale trains replicated a wedge where it gets wider towards the edge and Intermountain did not, so kind of an accuracy there. I don't know if they compromised in thickness to get that accuracy. Both have LED lights, so I think we have a tie there. Scale trains with uh, KD couplers, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Intermountain with, I'm sorry, Intermountain with KD couplers. Scale trains with their own coupler there. Um, I do like KD couplers better there. Scale trains and Intermountain have silver tipped ends. Intermountains also have silver tipped connection points though, so that's nicely done. Maybe a slight edge there for Intermountain. As we move to the side, a little bit of personal bias involved here. I'm just going to disclaim. I am a huge fan of jet black window tent. I saw it on the Overland models and I've loved it ever since and wished that a manufacturer did so on this. Intermountain did so. Uh, it's very, very dark. You can still see through uh, at certain angles with certain lighting, uh, much darker than the scale trains version so I think Intermountain has a slight advantage there. If you look at the dynamic brake fans, fan grills I should say, or uh, exhaust, you've got basically the same good detail, handrails good, Intermountain has had some waves on occasion, scale trains have had some waves on occasion, I think you have a pretty similar situation there. I'm going to change views so we can see more details from different angles. Okay, we got a decent side view now, so let's proceed. Now, we're going to move to the midsection. I think we got a tie here. I do believe that Scale Trains has more underbody detail than Intermountain. They uh, win the underbody detail, I think, slightly. If you look at the flag detail, I believe that. Scale Trains has a more accurate flag than Intermountain's flag. Uh, Intermountain's a little more cartoonish than uh, what I see on the Scale Trains locomotive. Uh, both have decent mold depth. I think Scale Trains has a slight tip of the hat to deeper molds, uh, mold depth, and some separately applied parts, such as these hatches up here. You've got the horns, which I believe are equally matched. Radiator grills. Uh, this is where it kind of splits both ways. I believe Intermountain did a better job with the top radiator grills. I saw less of a problem there. The lower radiator grills, Intermountain did better with accuracy with the corrugation count, but Scale Trains intentionally left a lower corrugation count that's inaccurate so that you could have see-through detail. I think that was probably the best way to go out of the two situations, but depending on which type of modeler you get, you could get either way. Brake wheels are both good. Already mentioned handrails being both good. I prefer the Intermountain trucks with the chains, the real chains, navigate curves without any problems. Scale Trains has plastic trucks that have a gap here that's not really realistic, but I understand their thought process behind that. They were trying to accommodate easy shell removal. I still think this looks better and it's still not that big of a deal to remove the shell with disconnecting the chain. I think the yellow sill looks good on both. Jacking pads look good on both, no issues there. Let's take a look at the butts of these things, or the rear ends, and uh, see what we've got going on back there. Again, Intermountain on the right, scale trains to the left here. Looking at the rear ends, we've got similar detail on both. You've got a little bit of a more uh, slouching chain on the scale trains than Intermountain. I don't know which one's correct. I didn't really find much prototype action that had like a consistency. Looking at the back, you've got MU hoses, coupler cut levers, you've got the um, accessory hoses, the uh, holders here back here, all uh, the same in my opinion. I think one thing about Scale Train's knuckle couplers is they do look a little more realistic than KD's. I got that. Uh, they skipped the glad hand to make that look more realistic. I think that's a good step. Now one thing that threw me for a loop really was the sand filler hatch on the rear. 
you've got a little bit of tubing showing on the sand filler hatch so the channel that goes down to the actual chamber on this one not so much just the hatch itself I looked at some different prototype photos and I could see how both manufacturers could interpret that in different ways it's very hard to figure out you know how that is without actually being on the locomotive to see so uh, I don't know who won that battle really I don't know which one's uh, better there now I think I already talked about the tier 4 grills up top I think Intermountain has an edge there I also think Intermountain has an edge in my opinion on factory discipline if you want to call that for quality control I'll show you what I mean here uh, not very not as obvious on this UP version uh, until you kind of view it from the side slightly but uh, from the side you see that the windshields uh, were installed not fully seated on some uh, kind of angled and there's just kind of a little bit of angles on the side windows as well I looked at this over the entire scale trains fleet and saw a consistency with that along with the occasional glue blop uh, that was actually a pretty decent sized glue blob. I had to think about it. I kind of dismissed it in the review, but they were on quite a few and they were pretty decent sized in scale. It would be like from my waist to my neck. Um, but in reality, you're talking about the tip of a pencil maybe. But what I mean by the glue blobs was back here where the, the actual shell of the locomotive met the walkway. You'd have a little blobs of glue. Not as much on this model that I'm showing now. So I just think Scale Trains is working through or should work through some concerns at the factory to get their QC discipline down. Um, the w windshield and window thing was slightly disappointing but not a huge factor in my opinion. Not as much as the glue blobs. Intermountain a couple minor quality control issues. One I see on many many models and I saw on the scale trains as well was the um, some of the broken paint on the handrails not in this specific uh, locomotive just chips of the handrails. It's very hard to paint these and keep them consistent. So overall that's about it on detail really. I'm sure I missed quite a few things. I'm sure that some people don't agree with me because there's a lot of Ford versus Chevy things going on out here with these two companies but I just want to tell you guys that in general uh, these two companies have really done a good job but they are going to be imperfect uh, a little bit of depth on the shell on the scale trains model and the exhaust I think is a little deeper and well done in the Intermountain model uh, Intermountain has a lot of strengths as well like I said the durability factor I think is slightly more on the Intermountain model so these guys are just slugging back and forth like some heavyweights small printing on both the warning labels is nice and uh, very nice detailed and all over the place all right we're gonna do a pull test on the scale train version first exact same spot for both locomotives 128 speed steps hold on let me tear that out there here we go Like we are at 4.9, 5.1. One. 5.1 is what we're maxing out at with the scale trains version. Now, one note on the scale trains version is I did the pull test on the review and it was a lot less than that. It was 4.2. So I don't know what happened there. Sometimes these things can be fidgety. I did pick a different area of the layout to try to. Uh, do a pull test that didn't have as many pull tests ran on them to get a more accurate one for this head-to-head -head. so maybe that's it so I guess apologies are due there but uh, for the reviews but I can go back and make a make a correction I've got the Intermountain sound off just to save time instead of going through the startup sequence We got 4.4 uh, is what the Intermountain locomotive is holding at. 
So a very slight advantage of about 0 .7, 0 0.7 ounces on that locomotive. This thing has a lot of momentum built in, so I'm just kind of holding it in place. But that it would equate to about eight or nine cars more on the inner on the scale trains in the inner mountain. Um, not a whole lot of difference when you consider the fact that these locomotives by themselves are pulling 60 or 70 cars. But pull test done nonetheless. Okay, I hope you guys appreciate the sacrifice because I shut down my air conditioning unit so you could hear the sounds of both of these without any sort of background noise. Which means when I go back upstairs, it's probably going to be hot. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Intermountain locomotive first. Let you hear the startup sounds. We'll go through just a couple sounds so I can gauge if I can see if there's a sound advantage one way or the other. Okay, there's the startup. I do sense a little bit of a uh, rattle. Uh, you can always bring the sound down. Let's go ahead and listen to bell and horn and that's it. Okay, I think that's uh, they're both ESU decoders, by the way. It's a little bit of speaker baffle on this one. It can be alleviated by turning the sound down. All right, now we're looking at the Scale Trains locomotive pulling the Intermountain off the track. There was no capacitor, it seemed, because the sounds instantly stopped. Pulling Scale Trains off the track seems like there's a capacitor. I'm going to wrap all of that in the decoder department along with the sounds. Both ESU decoders, but a slight difference there, obviously, that may benefit scale trains, but we'll listen to the startup of scale trains and see how they do as we continue in this little segment with F8 again. All right, so there's a startup sequence. No speaker uh, baffle rattle or rattle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but also a lower volume than the Air Mountain, so maybe lowering the volume on the Air Mountain would pretty much get rid of the little bit of rattle you have there. Let's go ahead and listen to bell and horn. It's horn. So I'm going to have to give the overall decoder edge to scale trains, both because of the capacitor and the lack of baffle. I think the sounds just slightly edge out Intermountain in that area. Okay, a little hard to hear with both locomotives running side by side here. On the left, you've got scale trains. On the right, you have Intermountain. Now, we're going to do the lighting and see who wins the lighting battles, and we're going to work our way down from the number boards. I believe the number boards are a near exact match. I see a little bit of light bleed on scale trains at the tip of one number board, but I'm just going to call it even there. Working down to the headlight, scale trains, all, both scale trains and Intermountain LEDs. Scale trains did a better job, I believe, capturing the LED turning into an incandescent look. So the incandescent look with the golden appearance looks better. Intermountain did a far better job having nice bright lights. Headlights more 
likely to illuminate the track like an actual locomotive is and brighter ditch lights um, a little more of a white appearance there that doesn't bother me as much because I think what's going to really set the model and the lighting department apart is Intermountain's walkway lighting which if you can see here when I turn off the ditch lights you can see the walkway lighting front and back and I'm not showing the back but you can see that peeking through the stanchions I think that sets the model and the lighting apart and gives Intermountain the advantage in that department so the slugfest continues scale trains, Intermountain, scale trains, Intermountain we're going to move on next alright motor control we're going to move the Intermountain unit to the right first at one speed steps out of 126 on my MRC Prodigy Elite Very smooth, no hesitation. We're only going to go one forward and back. Backwards one. All right, very smooth back for the Intermountain. Time for the scale trains. One speed step forward. Also very smooth. One speed step backwards. Very smooth. A tie in the motor control, slow speed motor control forward and backwards between these two manufacturers. As we look at these models head to head so you can get a good comparison of the front end, I want to tell you that both models performed well in the NMRA. Coupler height checks, gauge checks. I'm going to give Intermountain a slight advantage there because Scale Trains did have a couple sagging couplers on a couple different units but overall where Intermountain had all the NMRA, NMRA standards met on all units. Now I will give Scale Trains an advantage on variety because they had a lot more variety to choose from but Intermountain is producing more of these and more runs along with Scale Trains as well so I'm sure the variety pool will continue to fill up there. Here's the front of the locomotives as you can see the actual front handrails aren't angled out badly like you see on some models um, there's no real quality issues outside of some of the window issues with scale trains overall two beautiful units in this case and just like the boxes bef behind them the scale trains is on the right intermountains on the left in case you didn't know I know I swapped this around for this little segment so hopefully no confusion but I will you know obviously remind you in video Here's a view of the PTC antennas. I did give scale trains the advantage on that earlier. I'm going to go ahead and take that away from them now and call this a tie. Reason being, uh, yes, scale trains put the safety tread there, but Intermountain also upped their game in detail by adding the little actual separately applied grabs are probably molded in, but the details shown on this one. Both have lift rings, but these have the little separately applied grabs on the inside there for the Intermountain PTC. So. With uh, both having slight advantages over another in different areas, I'm going to call this a tie on the PTC antenna arrays and how detailed they are. Okay, we're at the scale now. Every time I get on a scale, my weight seems to go up. These models are pretty much guaranteed to have the same weight throughout their whole lives. But anyway, let's go ahead and check the Intermountain unit first. We're just going to do pounds at 1.62 pounds. That is the Intermountain unit. To save time, we aren't going to go through the whole gamut. You guys will have to use a Google calculator if you don't like that unit of measurement. Here's the scale trains, 1.65 pounds, just 0.3 pounds. Well, actually, it just went down to 0.2 pounds uh, heavier, which could equate to a little more pulling power, but again, almost negatable. But there you have the weight. All right, I'm focused in on some of these grills here. These are di the dynamic brake intake grills where the other side is the exhaust grill now these are larger than the Intermountain or smaller than the Intermountain unit and I looked at prototype photos there 
Now, I'm not 100% sure on this, so don't quote me, even though everything's on video and on the internet forever. I believe, by just a tiny, tiny bit, that Scale Train's grills on this side are undersized compared to the photographs, but I did not go out and measure the units, so I could be wrong there. Do not let this portion of the video affect your judgment. It is just very, very slightly undersized. Here is the inner mount unit. Um, the prototype photos I looked at, the grills seem to take up more area. And from what I could tell, just eyeball, it seemed like scale trains was just very, very, very slightly undersized. And I mean a minuscule amount, both on these dynamic brake intake grills and this grill. I'm sorry, let me go back. This grill right here. I believe are both undersized on one or oversized on the other. All right, I believe we've got everything quieted down here to off. We're going to listen to motor control, or motor noise, I should say. So we're going to go ahead and move the inner mountain, which is up front here. You guys listen in. If I can get the scale trains one to shut up and quit going through its shutdown procedures. Shut up, scale trains. Very tiny hum. Jeez. Very, very tiny hum. Can't hardly hear it at all. We're going to move the scale trains because it won't shut up. I mean, I guess it's good that it goes through that lengthy procedure there. I'll get this one out of the way so it's going past the camera in the exact same spot. Both one speed step. I'm hearing a similar hum at a different pitch. So I'm going to go ahead and call this tied on motor noise, both ne negligible to none, really. But let's move this up here so you, we can get it past the camera viewpoint so you can hear for yourself, just like we heard the Intermountain one. There's actually a little bit more of a buzz with the scale trains. So a little more audible. So I would normally say tie just a slight edge to the inner mountain on this one because I'm actually hearing a buzz from the scale trains unit. A very, very, very slight buzz. Well guys, you obviously know the most important factor of this video, which is I'm not a Raiders fan. I just went to one game and got the t-shirt. Now, seriously, on a serious note, you've got Intermountain and Scale Trains Tier 4 Gvos, both great products by people that I think care about the hobby and deeply care about getting you a good product. As you saw in the video, it was a slugfest. It was Intermountain does a little better on this. Scale Trains does a little better on that. Back and forth. I had a good friend, Tim, ask me just recently, how do I feel about the locomotives. If I was a person that could only afford one locomotive, which one would I buy? And I thought about that uh, between when I talked to him on the phone and when I recorded this video, and I came up with, I can't figure it out. Honestly, if I did that, I believe, if I had to choose, my answer would actually be option C. I go down, I flip some burgers, make the 200 plus dollars, and get the version I didn't buy. And then the question is, which one would I buy first and wait for? And who knows there? I mean, you literally, in my opinion, would have to take Intermountain's cab and Scale Train's radiator bottom where the see-through is, Intermountain's top of the radiator, I mean, just going back and forth, Scale Train's flag, back and forth. And you couldn't get a perfect model without taking some magical machine and combining those two. And that's what you see in model railroading with these head-to-head -head comparisons. So there is no clear winner here. It is really uh, much of a, a kind of a brain stumper on which one I would buy first and which one's better. The tent, the window tent, I just love it so much. It definitely uh, kind of plays a heavy factor for me. So uh, that's kind of where I tilt a lot. 
but in general who knows it's it's very tough to decide so with that said i'm going to leave you with a run by of both the locomotives together in unity i think we need more unity of the hobby there's no reason to have this ford versus chevy thing going on in this hobby both these companies have done a great job bringing great models to the uh, modeling world and i think they both should be commended and i think we kind of need to come together and quit kind of bashing you know one product over the other you know why a modeler likes this better than the other one everybody's going to have their own opinions unless it's a clear difference like a tyco and an overland brass model uh, so, unless it's that much of a contrast you're never going to get a clear winner so leave you with you guys with a run by thanks for watching this head to head and we will see you next time right here on my channel take care